Hi guys and welcome to the Mark the Shark MMA show. Appreciate you guys watching me here on my Twitch channel. And don't forget, please follow me. If you happen to have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe for free. And also make sure you follow me on my social media accounts, including the Mark the Shark MMA show YouTube channel, the Mark the Shark MMA show Facebook channel. My Twitch handle is Mark BJJ Fighter. And my Instagram is Mark underscore Retorto. And don't forget, it's Mark with a C and not a K. And don't forget to visit the website where you can sign up to be a guest. You can sign up to become a sponsor. Or you can shop and get fabulous hoodies and t-shirts like the one I'm wearing right here. Not too shabby, right? And also, you can make a donation. And also, don't forget that I also have a podcast that comes out either on, on High Heart Radio, Stitcher, Podbean, pretty much everywhere. I have a new episode that comes out every Friday or Sunday, depending on how the week goes. And then I'll be here on Twitch every Saturday. So make sure you watch me every single Saturday on this channel. All right, guys. Stay tuned and watch the show and enjoy it. Guys, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and hit the alert button so you get updates. And also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This podcast episode is brought to you by Defense Soap. Defend what you have built. Save 15% with the code Mark the Shark MMA Show, used by all Jiu Jitsu and MMA athletes to prevent skin infections. This podcast is also brought to you by Audible. Go to www.audibletrial.com slash MMA Show and you'll get a free audiobook when you sign up for a 30 day trial. This episode is also brought to you by HostGator. Save 60% on your web hosting needs by using the promo code MarkTheSharkMMAShow. Again, save 60% on your web hosting needs with HostGator. This podcast episode is also brought to you by Retorto Family Books. If you're interested in great books for your children to read, get books by Christina Retorto. And if you're interested in action, thriller, suspense books, you can get The Cabal, The Saga Begins, or fantasy books like Marcus the Vampire both written by your host, Mark the Shark Retorto. Again, go to www.retortofamilybooks.com. Also, do not forget to go to the Mark the Shark and Mimi Show podcast website, the shop for our merchandise. We got t-shirts, hoodies, tank tops, hats, and even mugs. Anything you can want with the Mark the Shark and Mimi Show podcast name on it. And also, please do not forget to go to our website, where you can make a donation to support the podcast. All you have to do is click on a donation button. Okay. All right, everybody, we're back on the show. And today I got a special guest on the show, MMA, MMA fighter Daniel Wynn. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good, good. Now, what state are you uh, com coming from? Coming in uh, from? I live in Georgia. Oh, uh, okay. So you're on the East Coast. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm on. Uh, I'm over in Jersey on the West Coast, on the East Coast as well. So. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. So give us a little background on yourself. Were you always involved in combat sports, or were you, did you do other sports and you discovered combat sports later? Uh, no, actually, well, I did, I was a skater when I was a kid, like, I did aggressive inline, but then, um, you know, I turned 18, went to college, graduated, um, just kind of got a job, saved up some money, and decided I wanted to hit people in the face, <laughs> <laughs> literally, that's exactly what happened. I started doing boxing just as a way to work out, to stay in shape, because it was it's just a really good way to stay in shape, mm. and you don't have to do a whole lot, you could do it you know, twice a week or so. And um, my coach was like, you can hit really hard. And I was like, oh, okay. So I did boxing for a few years. Then I moved on to MMA. But I never actually got to the boxing ring because it's just okay. kind of hard to find where I am. So I started at an MMA gym about maybe a year and a half, two years after boxing. And it's just been forward ever since. I got my first MMA fight in two years after that. And 
I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> um, okay. So what kind of promotions have you fought for so far? I fought for the NFC and I fought for um, the AFC and I think most notably would be the King of the Cage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard I heard of King of Cage before. How was that? How was it fighting for the King of Cage? Was that the one that you liked the most or the least or like which organization did you like better? Um, it was fun. I really liked King of the Cage because I like the whole like. It's just the whole atmosphere. It's it's a little different. It's just the. It's nice. It's nice. It's I was just really honored to be asked to be, to be there twice. So that was cool. The second time I won, the first time I lost, but um, they were really awesome to me actually. Yeah. Like, yeah, Andy and Robbie, they 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 run a good promotion. And the NFC is not bad either. I I like them too. Um, I fought for them for the for my very first MMA fight. They were amazing to me. All the uh, bouncers at the venues know me and everything. It's yes. just, I really can't pick one that's better than the other. And then the AFC, I only fought for them once, and they were super sweet to me as well. And okay. it's just, it's just been a really good experience. I've never had a bad experience with um, with promoters. You know. Okay, like because I know King King of Cage has been around for a long time, for a very long time. I don't know if they still they still have that. They used to have like this like muscular ref guy. All the refs were like big and muscular. <laughs> Are they still built like that or what? Uh, mine w- wasn't really built. He wasn't like fat, but he wasn't <laughs> muscular. Yeah, the back of the, they used to be jacked, like really jacked, kind of like kind of like the uh, character that they have, the, the picture they have with their promotions, the cards. I don't know if you ever if they still use the same one. It's like a bald, muscular dude. Oh, like a yellow kind of color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they still use that slogan. Oh yeah, that's cool. Now, do the other ones that they kind of follow the same format, where they, you know they got like uh, streaming, they stream it, or they televise it, and then they, you uh, know, they choose your walkout music and all that, and you come out on stage where you fight. Yes, the NFC, the NFC does stream it. AFC streams it, but only um, KOT, uh, King of the Cage is on the, is on like TV, so it's a little you know I guess it's a little different, a little more. And you can't really get cussed or anything. They told me my cordman can't curse. <laughs> well, my first, my first King of the Cage fight. They're like, yeah, you guys can't say any bad words. And it's like, oh, okay. Oh, because you're televised. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. The second one they didn't tell us, but we just kind of assumed and just didn't. And you know, just, uh, just, to, just to be safe. But um, but yeah, I've, I've had some really good times with them. So, what made you decide that you liked hitting people in the face? It's gonna sound really weird, but it's just—it's like you can be the bully, and you know, it's fine. People sign the contract; like, it's fine. (laughs) (laughs) I was never like the bully ever because I would never do that to somebody like unwillingly. But it's—it's—it's—I don't know. I don't know what it is about it. It's just—you know—you both agree to to lock yourselves inside this finite amount of space and. (laughs) <laughs> just throw hands and beat. Uh, now would you say you're kind of like an adrenaline junkie or uh no i don't no i do like like risky and daring things but i wouldn't i, I mean i'm not gonna go like base jumping or or, or jump out of an airplane or anything like that or rock no, i climb. would do that I, I would do that i would do that you would jump out of an airplane or rock climb or both i would rock climb uh, uh, with you know, you know, to a degree, but definitely jump out of an airplane. I would definitely go skydiving. Uh, <laughs> and there you go. There you go. So you got a little, you're a little bit of an adrenaline junkie. Yeah, with base little. jumping or bungee jumping, I'm, I'm not about that life. Yeah. I think probably most MMA fighters are probably a little bit of an adrenaline junkie, I think. You got to be, because it's like a, I guess it'd be like a high, you know, because again, you're kind of doing something scary and dangerous right to some degree you don't know what's going to happen i don't know it's really not scary to me because it's it's i mean there's a ref right there like it's if anything goes awry you know there's people watching it's not in the back Uh, alley you know in some you know derelict gas station or something uh, but you never know what could happen though right i mean the the, your opponent could be like a lot better than you and like not like hit you so hard, break your jaw, or right? Because you got a you got a, a full time job, right? Like a day job. 
right? That's you don't do this. Right. You have a, a full time job. You don't do this full time, right? So. Oh yeah, no, I have, I have a job. Yeah. Yeah. So like, if you get really hurt, then you miss work, right? That's what I'm saying. Like, so to some degree, there's some kind of like riskiness. Like, if you get like if the person you're fighting is like, you know, a lot, a lot more skilled than you. Let's say they got better hands. They. True. Have. I guess yeah. you don't really think about it, right? You try not to. I guess you really can't think like that, though. Well, I mean, I've had, I've had like my arm broken in a fight, and it wasn't so bad. And, yeah. But I don't know. I just feel like at 125 pounds, 135 pounds, you know, females, and not a whole lot could really. I mean, I know a whole lot could happen, but it's it's really like that's why the female fights last a lot longer than the men's fights, mm. generally. Because, I mean, the, the knockout power is not there. The ability to, to, to actually, I mean, we hurt people, but it's, it's a little different than the men, you know? Men are different, the way it is. Body yeah. logically different. So I don't, I don't really think about those things. It doesn't really, I mean, yeah, I broke my arm that one time, but that was probably my mistake. I don't know. I don't even know when it happened. I mean, I know what happened, but I don't know what happened. Was it from an arm bar or... Or was it no, like, was I have no idea. I just remember going into the what was it, the third round and I was holding my oh while I was sitting on the stool in my second, I was holding my arm down because something was wrong and I was like, something's wrong. And I, I don't know what it was. I didn't want the ref to stop the fight. I didn't want to look at it. And so I just went back out there and just uh -huh. jab, jab, jab. <laughs> oh, you were hitting with the the bad arm? No, I hit with the good arm. No, I I, uh, hit, okay. I, I got her to the fence and then I looked at it and I saw the little bone poking out and I was like, oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty nasty, right? <laughs> I mean, it wasn't through the skin, so it was just like poking up through my arm. And it was just, but it wasn't like, like through the skin, so it wasn't like bloody or anything. And I was like, oh, oh, this is interesting. Then I hear my corner say it's like a minute and a half. And, you know, they tell me the time, so I'm just biding my time. Until, like, I even went up to her and offered to, you know, if she wanted to run it back because I did just hold her against the cage because I didn't know really what to do. So I just kind of held against the cage and stomped the feet or, or tried my best to. And I tried to take her down a couple times, but my arm was not having it. Not at all. But, um, but yeah, I totally offered a rematch. If it ever comes to fruition, we'll see. Uh, okay. So when's your next fight? You got a fight um, coming up or... I was supposed to fight in the AFC for March 28th, but I, you know, I fought November 8th and I fought January 25th and February 29th. And um, my, my coaches were like, eh, you know, maybe we should kind of relax a little bit. Plus going down to 125 is not the easiest for me. So it was a little, I mean, it's not difficult. It's just a lot of discipline. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they felt that I should, take a break after going down to 125 because I, I have to admit, like, that was, that was, it was hard. Like, I, I dieted and, and did my workouts 21 days. Well, I worked out 15 of the 21 days, but I started 21 days out in order to get to 125. Just do it slowly, like, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 pounds here, um, 0.5 if it's a, you know, if it's a hard day, just slowly chipping, chiseling away. Let me get down. Oh, uh, so you you were trying to cut weight the uh, a little bit healthier than instead of like trying to like drop ten pounds in a week. Like yeah, I'm, I'm not about the water diet. That's horrible. <laughs> it's so miserable. And so I really only had to lose about five, well, about six point five pounds that week. So oh, it was, okay. Like I had I had <laughs> I joke about it with my with my best friend. Like I had. Uh, I had 18 chicken wings the Sunday before the fight, like barbecue wings. And then by somehow in the middle of the night, I guess the other two got digested as well. And um, I had 20 chicken wings like Sunday, Sunday, Monday before the fight. And yeah, it was, I was still good. Like I, I just did it so slowly that it just, I guess it just didn't really matter as much. Oh, yeah. there's your cat. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of your cat? That's Oblina. As you guys know, that show Ah Real Monsters. That's the that's the cat or the monster, the black and white monster's name. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. 
That's cool. Yeah. So what? So what are your aspirations? Do you want to like do uh, do MMA full time, or are you just gonna just do this as kind of like a hobby? Like, what are your what are your goals? I mean, I would like to go pro. It would be nice to do it at full time, but um, you know, I know it's MMA. It's not really the money making sport, but you know, I enjoy it too. And it is a little bit, and it is a little bit of cash. And I, you know, I have a little bit. I have quite a few years left in me because I did start super early. But I didn't really like batter my body as a kid either, you know. So um, I just basically went to college and worked out. And um, I mean, it'd be cool to make it to the highest level. It really would be. I'd be super honored to make it to the UFC, Bellator, or anything like that. Which, yeah. I, you know, of course, gonna go pro soon. I'm just not sure when yet. Especially uh, with the, the stuff going on and the you know potential fights getting canceled, like. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, because it had uh, coronavirus or something? Yeah. Like, a friend of mine's fight got canceled. and Or not canceled, but postponed. You know, people bought tickets and and, and everything. And it's like, oh, well, now you got to, like, postpone your, 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 your day you already planned. So. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy out there, right? You know, canceling. Disney's closing the parks and. Movie theater, like by me, like uh, movie theaters are not opening. Yeah. My jiu-jitsu school is closed for a week. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I hope mine doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I really yeah, you're lucky if they don't. You're lucky if they don't. But my regular gym still open. There's not my jiu-jitsu school. So well, that's nice. at least still work out. Yeah. I have a gym in my complex, so I go. I go there sometimes, and I run on like the treadmill or um. You know, just lift little weights. They have free weights. They have the little um, bow flex machine, whatever. And you just kind of just, you know, do little workouts without having to leave your house, really. You just walk there. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Now, in terms of, like, other female martial artists, or I should say MMA fighters, is there any particular uh, fighters that you look up to or that you try to copy or emulate in your fighting style or that you'd like? to emulate in your fighting style? Um, hmm. I like the fighting style of, um, I like Johanna and Jacek. I really love her. Like, she's like my favorite. I mean, we don't fight the same, but she's a very good, like, uh, uh, well, I guess we kind of do. You know, we, we both like the jab and, and, you know, to throw that one too. But um, she's, I guess, more of a Muay Thai kind of style. And I don't, I don't really know. I'm, I go into fights and I think I'm going to do one thing and I do the complete opposite. So I don't even bother anymore. Like if you watch, if you watch all my fight videos, I'm just, I have one fight on the ground. I have one fight that pretty much takes place in the cage. I guess maybe two fights that take place in the cage. And then one or one or two fights where I'm like throwing hands the whole time. I just never know what I'm going to do. So uh, I don't know. I just, but I do love to watch Johanna. Like she's definitely my favorite for the female fighters. Yeah. Did you see her last fight? Yeah. <laughs> what's that? What's that lady's name from China? Something Jang. Oh, Lily Jang. Jang oh Wei-Li. my God, dude! Mm-hmm. I don't know if you grew up watching Star Trek, but uh, a lot of people are like posting that that Facebook post of that yeah. character of Star Trek and Klingon, whatever they call him. Dude, well, her forehead. <laughs> it's so so fucked up. Well, I guess we're not keep your chin down, you know. I have, I haven't seen what she looks like. Has it gone down? Have you seen her, her what she looks like lately since? The oh fight? no! I, I mean, like in the fight, at least she keeps her chin down because you know it's hitting the dome, so it just kind of. Oh yeah, yeah. Right side, maybe. <laughs> oh man, I haven't. No, I, I haven't, haven't seen, seen any uh, postage and seen what she looks like. Like I'm sure it's gone down, but it I don't even know the extent happened. of the damage. Like I don't even know the extent of damage. I think they said it, she's not like um, like it's nothing crazy. It's just a lot of swelling. Yeah, but that was... I, mean, I hope it's nothing crazy. I hope it's nothing crazy because that would be terrible. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think she's gonna be training for a while anyway. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know? that's true. And she probably, I guarantee, if I had, I didn't read up on it, but I bet you, the uh, the athletic commission probably won't let her fight for at least six months anyway. Yeah, like even not. if it was nothing and the swelling went down in like four weeks or something. 
And she was back to fight. Her fight. Yeah. You know, because she definitely, she definitely had to have a concussion. You know, you don't have to be knocked out. You had a concussion, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I, I would agree. She definitely had a concussion. <laughs> they probably were watching her. Now, did you, did you think she won that fight? I was actually a little bit surprised. It was Except for that last cool. round. Like, I think her, like, like when she started to get hit, I think it just affected her. That, that very, uh, the very last round. Yeah. That, I think it just got to her then. I was like, she got it popped a few times in the chrome dome. And oh, yeah, her face was already <laughs> more. <laughs> I mean, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to go in as much. You don't want to pursue as much because it's like, man, if I get hit. <laughs> Oh, this is gonna be horrible. I mean, I don't think we ever. Well, I never think about the next day. <laughs> Oof, the next day. But I never <laughs> think about the next day. So it's it's just like, but at the moment, it's like, wow, this 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 kind of this could kind of hurt. Yeah. But did you think she was winning the fight, or did you did you think that she didn't have it? I thought she kind of had it. If, if it wasn't for that last round, like yeah, the last round was kind of a. I don't, I'm not a judge for a reason, I guess. Yeah. I'm biased against Johanna anyway, so I'm, I'm going to say she had it, but the last round was a little bit, eh. eh. I mean, I could, I could see it as eh, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Not quite for Johanna, but I still want to say it is, but eh, eh. You know, yeah. got to be fair. It was, it was uh, I definitely think that that was uh, a way better fight. It was definitely better than the main event, I'll tell you that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Fight so boring, but I, I can uh, see why. I I mean, I mean, it's like a truck. Yeah, he hits like a truck. You know, the other guy I guess didn't want to get hit by that Mack truck. You know, but uh, yeah, that that the women man, they, they just go at it. That's why I gotta give. I love watching women fight more than the men. Like I really <laughs> do. Like the women have like no fear. I don't. I don't think the women think about. Uh, how can I say this? I don't think women care about taking risks. I think that's the way. Am I phrasing it right? Whereas I think the men are afraid to lose or something. I don't know. That's just depending. I guess like, like if a guy gets at, at a certain level, like they're at the number one seed or the champ, it seems like they're afraid to lose. I guess well, I, I don't know. I, I thought the men have more to lose because uh, if, if you take a 135 female and a 135 male, I mean, that male is going to hit yeah. way harder and way more, just way more umph. And I, I feel like women focus, not focus, but uh, like, like you find more like jujitsuists and people that are like good on the ground. I mean, the ground and pound, there's some scary ground and pound that some of the women have. But um, I think a lot of women kind of, go towards more of the, the ground game rather than the stand up. And then like I said, we don't, we just don't hit as hard. I mean, it's not biologically meant to do it like that. Mm -hmm. I guess nobody's really biologically meant to hit people, but you know, yeah. you guys do have a strength advantage. Yeah. Now when you do your takedowns, did you wrestling type takedowns or do you do that, that head throw, that head judo head throw? I do wrestling type take takedowns because I feel like judo is based in a gi and there's no gi. Yeah. I know you need the head, but I mean it's just so easy to slip out. I feel like it would be, you know, yeah. not. I notice the women tend to do that throw more than the men. I don't know if you noticed that. Like when they do throws, they do the head, you know, the, the head like the old round around. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm always wondering like why they would choose that as opposed to like a double leg or a single leg. So I just wanted to get your input on that. I don't know if like, if there's a new why women would choose more that more than the men or. Yeah. I have, I have no idea. I'd rather, yeah, I'd rather do like a double leg. Yeah. You know, singles are fine too. I, I'll go to a single, but actually it doesn't really matter. It's whatever you give me. Yeah. <laughs> whatever you give me, you give me a leg, give me the body lock. You give me the yeah. head and arm. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. Now, do you currently, now, are you currently sponsored by anybody? Any like, uh, companies or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I have Fresh Start Entertainment. They, they okay. back me. I have a lot of sponsors. Um, 
have spoken hot photos. Um, I have a couple of others too around, but um, like I do have a little list and I do thank them like, all the time because like on my Facebook right. and stuff. All right. Now it's for the people who, and for the people who watch this video or they listen to this one, they get some podcast format. If they're interested in getting in contact, with you, what's the best way for them to get in contact with you? Do you have like a website or a Facebook page or? Yeah, actually, I do have a Facebook page, uh, Danielle Wynn MMA, and I do have an Instagram and a Twitter. Okay. And then my Instagram needs to get more popping. <laughs> and, and what's the name of your Instagram Instagram account? Is this it Danielle? is it's Danielle underscore Wynn underscore fight. Like. Uh, and then what's the Twitter account handle? Is it the same same thing or? Probably. <laughs> yeah. It's the same, <laughs> okay, it's the same thing. <laughs> All right. All right. And then, um, yeah, it was, it was great having you on the show. And if anybody who's watching her wants to sponsor her for future fights or get in touch with her, uh, this is Daniel Wynn, MMA fighter from Georgia. Um, now, if you guys are listening to this in podcast format, keep listening because there's more content to follow. And for those who are watching this, when this goes live, show's up. <laughs> 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 but if you're listening to it in podcast format, keep listening because there's more content to follow. All right, guys, we'll be back for those who are listening to podcast format. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll be right back. But first, a word from our sponsors. During World War II, I was in prison in a Nazi camp. I died there, or so I thought. Instead, I became a creature of the dark world. Now I fight to protect my daughter. I am Marcus the Vampire. The book is now available at Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com and RetortoFamilyBooks.com. All right, guys, this week's episode is done on a live show. But if you happen to be listening to this in a podcast format, keep listening because there's more content to follow. All right, guys, see you guys next week.